Well, the lost brothers, Three. my Three. African, Three. who got One. enslaved by the white men. We both got enslaved by the white men, isn't it? <laughs> we both got enslaved. But the difference between me and you, I got liberated by Islam. Where are you from? Originally, Gambia? Uh, the West Africa. Okay. Originally, we believe we're from Mali, but it's not like okay. something certain. But as I was saying, the difference between me and you, okay, a former Christian, who embraced the faith of Islam, who been liberated by the faith of Islam, which made me equal to the whole humanity. There is no superiority based upon the statement of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. There is no superiority over the Arab, over the non-Arab, over the black, over the white. So we equal and Islam came to liberate us as individuals from the worship of the creation to the worship of the creator and, and not to worship a white God and raise the status of a white man and putting down the status of the Africans as servant and even biblically it is supported the view that one of the kids of no I have to go one of the kids of Noah's is the cause for the being black is a punishment in accordance to the scriptures but sorry brother now this he said that uh, that hadith that you got that statement, I believe it's, it's Daif, so it's about the equality, it's not even the Sahih Hadith. So now, I'll, give you you a, I'll give you a, I'll give you, a, I'll give you, a, yes, I'll give you a, Islamic sciences I'll, I'll, to define what is this authentic Because I've heard people use hadith that before. And, and a non-authentic Hadith. Right, you can check their authenticity no, of that Hadith. Al you, to but I'll, let me give you, is, I'll let you one speak, second. I'll let you what, speak, I'll let you speak. No, so you have to clarify this point. You made a claim that the Hadith of of khutbah to walda which is the farewell khutbah is not authentic not. from the ahadith in accordance to the islamic traditions there is no there is few ahadith that has so many narrators so many narrators come on what is the define the da'if from sahih look, look this is a statement but <laughs> let me just make the point the khutbah to walda which is the farewell uh, sermon was given by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, on a day where there were so many Muslims, hundred thousands, more than hundred thousand Muslims who testified upon this hadith. So what is your criteria that would make this hadith weak or daif? Well, like I said, people have used this uh, yeah. What is your criteria? So I, I'm... I can't give you the specifics, but I'm sure if you Come look on, at that's if you look at evidence. Wait, let me finish. Don't make a claim like that. If you yeah. look at the, the chain, you will see your scholars, your scholarly ah, your scholarly consensus will be that it's not a Sahih hadith. Now that's just a claim. Yeah, I, I would have to bring the evidence. Yeah, but don't make the claim, research, man. Don't anyone make can the claim. research. I don't have my claim in this details, case, but, let me answer right. to that. So my claim for his statement, which the hadith of um, the farewell khutbah sermon is weak mm. i say the opposite it's from the strongest ahadith we have in between the islamic traditions and sciences because the amount of companions and people who witnessed and and conveyed what was said is a such a number that makes this hadith very strong is one of those unique ahadith in between the islamic in the the ilm hadith in the the sciences of the narrations so this is my statement. Anyway, brother, I will let you go. It was a pleasure to see you. What is your name? Bilal. Uh, you don't have a real name? We can speak behind the cameras. Yeah, if, if I would love if to see next you. Week, I will, I'll bring the, um, God bless the, you. the verification. But let me just respond because you said about the equality within Islam about blacks and other people. So I want to give my rebuttal before you go because you didn't and give me a I chance. And then I give you mine, okay. You didn't give me a chance. Okay, so I, will I accept Sahih, that. I'll go to Sahih Muslim. I, I go to that. This is uh, Hadith 1602 and it says, It was narrated that Jabir said, A slave came and swore allegiance to the Prophet, pl pledging to emigrate, and he did not realize that he was a slave. Then his master came looking for him. The Prophet said, Sell him to me. And he brought him for two black slaves then after that, he did not accept the oath of allegiance of anyone until he had asked, is he a slave? So I'm giving you a hadith where there was a non-black slave who was then traded for two black slaves. So my question would be, if everyone is equal, why would this one be worth two black slaves? If it's a beautiful statement. Look, we, 
the, the pre-Islamic practices, what we talk in Islam as a form of liberation of the black people and Africans, not a, as an instrument of oppression and give continuation to the enslavement and the idea that by being black you're inferior, by being black it means a punishment, by being black you have to serve. These ideas is in opposition to that which Christianity teaches in accordance to Noah's history, story when he was um, after the, 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 the Ark of Noah, basically. Yeah, but you didn't uh, answer no, no, address no. The, uh, no the, I'm addressing the point from an right. Islamic stand view. Mm -hmm. Where I'm, my statement and my claim is Christianity as a system is, is, is doing the opposite service of Islam as a faith and system towards your people and my people. That's my claim. How? Well, from a theological perspective, there is the belief that our, uh, Prophet Noah, from his descendants, because of the, the, the behavior of his child, uh, his des descendants of Canaan would be black, is believed to be, this is part of theology, would be black and they would be in a state, uh, status of servitude to the others. So this is a form, a form of punishment and a form of uh, uh, continuous oppression of the black race. Bless you, brother. I hope to see you next week or so. Well, we'll debate next yep. week. You didn't really address my, the, the, the hadith. You sort of went around it, because I specifically asked you, why was one slave who was non-black traded for two slaves? Yeah, but you the didn't point give me, is, if, 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 the practices, if the practices, pre-Islamic practices, do not, Islam doesn't stand for that view but or stands it, for this, that practice. Yeah, you have to look, the core, prophet, look, look, one no, second. No, but this was not pre, and my okay. point is it's not pre-Islam. This is the example okay. of your prophet. Was this Sharia? This is the point. Is this the Sharia? Does, did the, not, the Arab pagan have the obligation to abide by Islamic law? No. If that is not the case, you, the Islamic, look, in order to judge... I'm not talking about the pagan, I'm talking about the actions of your prophet. Okay, the prophet had to use the currency practiced by the people. He couldn't make up a currency, say, okay, if the practice, if the practices of the pagan Arabs is that the black but, slaves but if he was the were Arab worth... Mean, if he was... Uh, look, if the practice of the, the Arab uh, pagans is that one, one non-black slave mm -hmm. is worth two black slaves, the Prophet, peace be upon him, didn't have the choice to change those currencies. He acted of, upon the practices of the people. But in reality, if you look and study Islam, Islam tries to eradicate slavery. And one of the means to purify your sins or, or your bad deeds or something of that nature is to free slaves. So as a system, Islam promotes the Islam. I'm not talking about the practices of Muslims. Islam is a system, and that is what I'm standing for, defending and calling to. So Islam is a system promotes freedom, promotes justice, promotes equality. And, and, and this is from the core values that will liberate people like you and me. Unlike to say that you should worship a white God. And in Islam, we don't, God Almighty Allah Azawajal, he doesn't have images, he doesn't have pictures, sta statues, we don't worship the creation. Right, we go to the creator. Sorry. No, but he's making lots of points. Your biblical God, he lived for 33 years. Did he free, did he free wow. any single black man? But the point is, did he enslave any black man? No. This is the point. So we he's talking about a system that brings liberation and liberation and freedom. But then in the Quran, it says what your right hand possesses. This is not liberation. Look, this is not freedom. But so let me, only let me finish because I let okay. you speak for a while. Yes. So when we look at the practice of Jesus, yes, he didn't liberate anyone in that sense, but he didn't also hold people captive. So as an example, there is something that describes that if the person, the founder of the faith, who is the example for all of mankind, was not a slave owner, this would be the example of the Christian to follow because Christian means little Christ. So we follow his example. So you cannot say liberation, one uh, Islam prescribes liberation when it also permits you to have slaves okay. and it ha allows you to have captives, females okay. and so Beautiful. forth. Look, look, the difference in this case is that Islam does not necessitate that a black 
and slavery are together or equal. Slaves are of all types of ethnicities and races. Unlike in our Christian Judaic traditions, it's different that context. And especially with the transatlantic slavery and slave trade, is something that has marked the, the concept and, and of slavery in comparison to the practices of slavery but from an Arabic well, because you and said about African. Jesus being yeah. white. But if you go across the world, if you go to China, you'll see a Chinese Jesus. If you go to Ethiopia, you will not see a white Jesus. So people have um, portrayed Jesus in their own image. So in terms of the scripture, if you read the Bible, it does not say Jesus was a white man. In Europe, they portray Jesus as a white man. But in Christianity, when you look at Christianity across the world, how Jesus is portrayed, that's why I say go go to Ethiopia and show me a picture of a white Jesus. You will not okay. see that. You'll see a Jesus that looks like the people. So therefore, the whole notion of white man is a straw man because that's only in Western or in European countries that happens. I see. Again, if Jesus is is changed form and color based upon country and location, I don't know why you put so much faith in a in a in a figure that is not even agreed upon. If you were to worship Allah Azawajal, okay, Allah doesn't have any shape or form or you cannot give the human qualities to Allah Azawajal, God Almighty. Unlike you, you give divine qualities to Jesus as an individual. So in Islam, we separate the creation from the creator. So I am more inclined to worship a believable God that doesn't have human features or human characteristics or even in between the Bible who worshipped and worship is a sign of submission and neediness. So if you claim Jesus to be God but you agree that Jesus worshipped, there is a contradiction between being independent, self-sufficient or all-powerful and needy and need needy and dependent and in, in, uh, in the mercy of God as well. Now, let me respond two points. Yeah. I just wanted to finish about yeah, the sorry. point of Last, Islam uh, being liberating. Now, if you go to many Christian countries, the people still speak their own native language. If you go to Egypt, for example, what language do they speak? Do they speak a traditional Egyptian? No, they still they, have. They speak Arabic. They still Most have, of these countries they still that have, have. been colonized were not liberated because that's why even here you see English people praying in Arabic. They have lost their own language. Some countries they still may may still speak their traditional language, but in Look, Christian countries, let me just finish. Yeah. In Christian countries, they all still speak their original language. In Arabic countries, many cu countries where there's Islam now, they have lost their native language. So how that, how is that liberation when they cannot even pray to the Almighty in their own language? They have to pray in Arabic. That is not liberation. Okay. Christianity allows you that liberation. Okay. And just to, uh, yeah, go on because I forgot yeah, my second sorry. point. Uh, in terms of the Arabic language language as a means of communication with God Almighty. Look, in Islam there is a unification through the Arabic language, not a, a dependency or making of faith based upon the Arab, Arab race, okay? The Arabic language is the language I communicate with all the Muslims around the world. Even that particular region in the world is not too far from the location where Jesus walked and was around. So the, the claim that the... the can I ask your yeah, name again? Sorry, Bilal, Bilal. Right, and I, sorry to interrupt, yeah. but I, the reason why I asked him that, his name is Bilal, that wasn't the name he was given. His name is now Arabic, so where is the freedom and oh, liberation? that's wrong, Bilal no, is because, not an Arabic yeah, name. Or because you've it's taken from... It's an Ethiopian. Yeah, it's, or it's taken yeah. from the, the slave. Yeah. But it's an so Islamic claim. name. I should, Even, let me correct myself, yeah. it's an Islamic name. So my it's point is... It's an Islamic is, figure right, who I exactly. look up to and so I in take terms as an of, example. That's what I'm saying. So when people take their Shahada, normally they're encouraged to take up an Islamic name. Not Most really. Of, it's a, it's a common practice, right. but it's not a religious practice. Yeah, I didn't it's say just that. I didn't a common that practice, yeah. But it's you a wrong notice, belief, though. But what you notice, yeah. so the liberation is that people are strongly encouraged. If people become Christian, they are not encouraged to adopt a Christian name. So this is the well, liberation. Well, that's, that's not the case. Because, look, what, from an historical perspective, mm -hmm. the, the connection of language and religion, mm -hmm. there is no coincidence why uh, Portugal, Spain, Italy, uh, France, they are strongly 
uh, that those four languages or five, their root is Latin. And the Latin language was the, the language in which the Bible used to be preached with. It wasn't preached in Portuguese as a language. This is something quite modern. Equally, when the Quran is recited in the Arabic language, in, the, in that region of the world of North Africa and so on, there is also a connotation with faith. This is how the world runs. It's not something that makes you inferior or superior. But what we're talking about is a white God. But unlike, I'm, I'm unlike, them. unlike, right. and another point, when Islam came to, to, to Mali, mm -hmm. we know through the human history... And even uh, the, the dress the, cloth the, is very Islamic now. Well, people I'm not, look, thobe, I'm, I'm yes, wearing this. But people wear the thobe a LA. lot. So that because, doesn't define my faith. Yeah, that doesn't saying, define my faith. There are is, guidelines. Right. There are guidelines mm -hmm. in terms, look, we have to make a distinction between the Islamic teachings mm -hmm. and the Muslim practices. Mm -hmm. And most of the Muslim practices are highly influenced by those predominant uh, ethnicities from that particular part of the world that are the majority. And they hold some of the pre-Islamic practices in between their practices. So there is a, a big mixture between culture and religion amongst the South Asian community, West Africans and so on. So there is, we have to make a distinction. We're talking about Islam, not about the cultural practices and beliefs of the but, Muslims. But the point, that can be yeah, wrong or is, right. This is my point though. We're compar comparing liberation. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm saying you see a greater freedom and liberation within Christianity because people can pray in their own language. When they convert to Christianity, they are not encouraged to take a Christian name upon them. So in even Historically, was yeah, the, yeah, look, Portugal, let, let me just the slaves, let me just what happened? So, so I'm saying even today, let's when, when we had a uh, slave, uh, the, what uh, is your when name? You, when you had your surname? When you had Do you have a native? I no, no, I have either. A native, I do. Uh, oh, I, have a native. I don't know where you're yeah, from. Yeah. Where you from originally? Oh, no. oh so my, my, I have yeah, then yeah, yeah, yeah. respect but, for that. But, <laughs> but my point is that that is respect an expression of the liberation, and I just wanted to go up, um, to the point of um, when you talk about Jesus being limited. In Islam, you have the belief that Muhammad went up to the seventh heaven and he spoke to Allah. Allah was behind the veil, which meant Muhammad could not see Allah in his full glory. If you believe God cannot be limited, then there is no such thing as a veil that can limit God's okay. nature. When Wait, let, me Moses. let me just finish my point. So even in Islamic, what we have is a hypocrisy because they'll say, well, no, 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 God can't limit himself to become a man, but yet he can limit himself to speak to Muhammad behind the veil. But if God is all powerful, how can a veil, because a veil stops something. So therefore, even in your own belief, Allah is limited because there's a veil that stops him from being seen by the believers. Okay. The limitation of the creation shouldn't be connected to the greatness of the creator. In accordance to your own scriptures, did Moses see God himself? What happened when Moses asked to see God? In accordance to your own traditions and your own scripture. He didn't see God in his full glory. So that's it. Why are you arguing over something that because is not possible? The greatness of God Almighty is not possible for against, us. That goes against your what, point. What? Because no, no. your point is I, I, I that just God reversed cannot, your claim no, I, and showed you in between your because, own beliefs and and and, and, that doesn't and help uh, your scripture point that is equal that God help by your point okay. I'll explain why. the greatness because, of God because, God is not part of his creation but, but how can you expect the creation to see the create the creator but, but, if God is not a creation but, but your, in accordance point, to our belief yeah, but system your point, what I'm trying to say is your example of Moses does not help your argument okay because but the, the point Christian is belief, the creator yeah, the, is not let, inside let of his that. creation the Christian belief is that God uh, the fullness of God dwelled uh, within Jesus, but he strips himself of his co-equality with God. So if Moses saw God, that still goes with our belief that God can come into creation and in a it's limited our, way. It's not yes, our but that's what I'm saying. I'm saying the hypocrisy is that in your belief, Allah is limited. You're saying God cannot become limited look, because if look, Allah is behind the veil, let me finish, to his majesty. Let me just finish my point. There are certain let me just actions. finish my point. Because yeah, I'm saying, if we're saying the scripture says God dwelt within the ta tabernacle of hum humanity, which is in itself a veil. You're saying Allah has a veil, but you're trying to say you just disagree with the hum human nature of a veil. But the fact of the matter is they are both a veil. We believe God became limited in a certain way, 
you disagree with it, but your argument is God cannot become limited. But in your own belief, you believe Allah is limited because if Allah is a, behind a veil, that means the veil stops Allah's full glory being seen by anyone from consuming everyone. So Allah has to limit his ability. We're saying God did the same thing but did it in human form. So I don't understand why Muslims would then, it's just a straw man uh, point to say, well, I don't believe in the human veiling. It's the same thing, a veil is a veil. So that's what I'm trying to so say, the point about Moses. And let me just finish the last yeah. point and I respond. Sorry. You say you don't believe that uh, God can become limited, but all the prophets taught in the Old Testament, as you said, Moses saw God, so God had to enter in creation. So you you said Moses didn't see God. I said he didn't see him in his full glory. As you, if you know the story, you're Christian. He said, I, I'll, I'll put my hand over you so you can certainly see my back. And so he only saw part, a part of the nature of God. Abraham spoke to God. Jacob in the Bible wrestled with God. So your argument that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. I will get there, that, that can, can. God cannot cre enter creation. Well, all the prophets taught that God could. So where did this one belief come from, Muhammad, 600 years later, that contradicted all the prophets? Because you say Muhammad teaches what all the prophets taught that believe in one God. But the prophets also taught God entered in cre into creation. Okay. <coughs> so, in accordance to the Islamic creed, God is the creator, separate from his creation. If you see God, is, it means that God became a creation. And that doesn't suit his majesty. We're not, we're not denying that God is all capable and all knowing and all able. But the difference is, because God is able, to create anything does it mean that God has to belittle his greatness this is a contradiction to his highness and his greatness so it's impossible to God in accordance with Islamic um, teachings to act in a way that does not bef uh, befit his majesty even let's go to a humanly example now we have King Charles okay there are certain actions that is not befitting for a king to do. So that's why when it comes to God, who is the king of the kings, why would you expect God to do things that belittles his greatness? This is a contradiction. What makes God worthy of being worshipped is because of his praiseworthy attributes and actions. So if God would do an action that is belittling his greatness, that would contradict the whole concept of the believing God, which is due to his greatness and, and majestic attributes and worth of praise and glorification. Anyway, I have to go. Okay, Sorry, I have lot, some serious words. Sorry, one forgive more me. Point there. I, yeah. I look forward to yeah, seeing it. Don't we'll worry. Next, Don't I just worry. want one more question. Don't worry, brother. Sorry. Yeah, one, I, one, one if if you say it, then I would to, be forced yeah, to reply. Yeah, Sorry, fine. brother. Yeah, no, no, point. let's not do it. No, point, I, I really have to submit some work. Yeah, Sorry, brother. Just one point. Honestly, no, please. Just one point. Please, please. Please respect that, please. I respect. No, no, no. That will prolong my stay. No, 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 no. I really have to leave. That's the problem. No, no, brother, you, sorry. You please, please, done. please. No, not this time. Respect. All right. All right.